This is Google Apps Updates Roundup number 112. In this episode, I will show you 23 new features in 15 different Google Apps. So make sure all your apps are up to date and let me show you what's new. Let's start with YouTube and here I'm going to show you three new changes. The first change is related to the YouTube shorts and I started to see this new button showing in some shorts when there is a background music playing in the video. Now you have the ability to save this music to your library. And when you tap on the button, this is what happens. It will automatically save it to a playlist called sounds from shorts. The second change is in the normal videos. When you tap on the gear button, you will see that the additional settings button is now called more, but everything is exactly the same. And the last change in some videos, I started to see this new sync feature that will automatically synchronize any comments with the timestamp with the currently playing video. And as you see here, when you start scrolling, you can tap on sync to video and then it will show you the comments related to the exact timestamp you are currently watching. Before jumping to the next chapter, I have a question for you. Have you ever wondered what kind of digital footprint you have left online or what shows up when someone like an employer, client or even a stranger searches your name? Whitebridge.ai gives you the full picture in just seconds. Whitebridge.ai is an AI-powered platform that scans public online data and compiles a comprehensive profile based on someone's digital footprint. You can use it to learn more about yourself, keep your family safer online, or even research potential business prospects. I ran a report on myself and I just can say that I forgot about some old posts I published a long time ago. You can just learn about how to interact with me and how not to. Do you know that I don't like to push irrelevant products, avoid pitching non-tech or off-topic items, and so on. In today's world, your online data speaks before you do, from search results to old social posts. Your digital footprint can influence job offers, business deals, or even your personal safety. Whitebridge.ai helps you take control of that narrative. Visit Whitebridge.ai today and run your first online footprint scan. See what's out there, stay informed, and stay protected. Check everything about you online using AI at get.whitebridge.ai forward slash IDTR. Use my code IDTR to get 25% off on your first purchase and big thanks to whitebridge.ai for sponsoring this video. The next app we have is Google Photos and here I'm going to show you two new changes. The first change is related to the photo editor. When you go to the adjust tab, you'll notice here that the HDR tool is now called tone and this one will allow you to adjust how bright is the HDR effect. The second change is on the web. Now under the side menu, you will see a new category called the screenshots and recordings which will make it easier for you to locate this type of photos. The next app we have is Gemini and here I'm gonna show you four new changes. The first change is the updated app icon. As you see, it looks totally different. It uses multiple colors and instead of only one color like before, the icon itself is more rounded and bigger than the previous one. The second change is related to the Gemini Pro subscribers. Now you have the ability to generate up to 10 VU3 videos totally free of charge as a trial if you have the pro subscription and once you tap on the video toggle you will see this banner saying view 3 fast preview bring ideas to life in an eight second video with sound describe a scene and add details like visual style and background music and you will get this feature in those 73 countries that you see right now on the screen but I'm not sure if the allowance will reset next month or it's just a one-time thing the third change is in Gemini live now you have the ability to activate the captions and you will see a button over here at the top right corner that will allow you to activate or deactivate the feature and this is how it works. So when you start talking to Gemini, hi Gemini, how are you? As you see, the phone is completely muted but I still can see what Gemini is saying without the need to use my phone's speaker. And lastly, Google added two new shortcuts to the Gemini widget, which you can use to quickly access the live video or the screen share. The next app we have is Google Maps, and here I'm going to show you two new changes. The first change is the addition of a new share button in the directions card. So for example, when you pick a place and then tap on directions, you will see a quick shortcut for the share option 
which will make it easier for you, but this wasn't the case before as per the screenshot on the left. Unfortunately, the second change in Google Maps disappeared while filming the video, but thankfully I found an article on 9to5Google showing the same exact feature, which is the ability to report weather-related incidents while navigating, like flooded road, low visibility, and some other options here as well. Next, we have the Wallet app, which got the complete Material 3 expressive redesign. So let me open the Wallet app to show you the new design. You will notice here that everything appears in its own container with more rounded corners and bolder font. And here's how that transactions page looks. Also, when you try to add a new card, as you see, the list looks different with the same bold font we've seen in the home page. And when you try to add a new card, you will get some Material 3 animations first, and then it will take you immediately to the camera to scan the card or enter the details manually. We didn't get any new functionalities, but as you see, it got this new look. Next, Google Chrome. And here I'm gonna show you two new changes. The first change is the new Manage Windows feature. This is one of the features that we used to have a very long time ago, but it required an extension to be activated in Google Chrome, but now it works on its own. And when I go to the more menu, as you see, I have here manage windows and move to another window. When I go to manage windows, I have the ability to open multiple windows and use them in a split screen view, or I can jump to the recent apps screen and see multiple Chrome windows open at the same time. And if I want to move any tab, I'm currently browsing to another window. I have here move to other window and then I can choose the one I want, then tap on move. And as you see, now I have two tabs and in this window, I have nine tabs open and so on. The second change is on the desktop version. And I started to see this new section called continue with these tabs, which will give you quick access to your most recent tabs without the need to search for them. Plus you have the ability to click on the tick button to mark as complete, which will remove it from the list. Before talking about the next app, if you like any of the wallpapers you see in this video or any of my previous videos, they are now available in the wallpapers by in-depth tech reviews app. And here are the latest additions. I added 23 new wallpapers that look stunning on any smartphone. You will find Google Play Store download link in the description. And now let's get back to Google Apps. Now let's talk about the apps that only got one new change and I will start with the Google app. Now when you go to the settings and then other settings, you will see a new toggle called shorten links to web pages. Links you share to pages will be automatically shortened. But if you don't want this to happen, you can simply turn off the switch. The second app we have is Gboard and Google once more updated the emoji page design. On the left, you will see the most recent design for the same page. And you will notice here that the delete button is back again to be on the same line with the tabs. And the tabs themselves are now narrower than the previous design. The third app we have is Google Home. And now when you try to add a new person to your household by going to settings and then tap the plus button, then it choose the email. Now you have the ability to choose a new option called member, which will give limited access to that person. When you go inside, you will get even further customizations. You have two levels, either the activity level, which will allow access to device and home history to see what's happening in the home. Or you can also give settings access level, which will allow access to settings, including automations to help manage the home. And here you will see what this person cannot do in this home. It can't add, edit or remove people, can't add or remove devices and can't delete the home. And once you are happy with the access levels, you can tap on next and share the invite. Next, we have the clock app, which got some minor visual tweaks. The first one is the slightly redesigned toggles from Material 3 Expressive. And also the weather icons are now more flat, unlike the 3D icons like before. Moving to iOS, the Snapseed app got a complete revamp on the iPhones. So take a look at the new splash screen. It will give you a haptic feedback while animating these photos, which feels and looks really nice. And the app itself looks much better as well. When you tap on the plus button and give access, and let's pick one of the photos. As you see, all the menus and tools in the app look much better. And there is a haptic feedback you get with every slider. 
So I really enjoy the new design of Snapseed, which is unfortunately not the case on Android. As you see here, there is a massive difference in the design. And if you are using a Pixel phone and have your Google Play services updated to June 25 version, now when you go to settings and then security and the privacy and then privacy dashboard, you will see the Material 3 redesign in this page. Additionally, when you go inside any of the listings, you will see the same change. Also, when you try to open any of the apps, the overlay card that gives access to apps to your sensors looks different as well and has a different design as compared to the previous version on the left. And lastly, Gemini on the web versions of Gmail, Google Docs, and the Drive got access to the Gemini Gems feature from the apps side menu, which will allow you to create a custom gem and use it in these apps. So that's pretty much it for today. These are all the new features I wanted to show you in Google Apps. Please reach me out on social media if you spotted any new feature to include in my future episodes. But for now, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.